Hey guys, it's Denise here, NOLA Collectibles, and welcome to my channel. I'm here today to do a thrift store haul. This is back by popular demand. I did receive a couple of emails from folks who were specifically requesting another thrift store haul, saying that you guys really enjoy them. I love doing them too. And so here we are, we're doing a thrift store haul. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Denise, NOLA Collectibles, and I am a part-time reseller. I sell on eBay. My store name there is also NOLA Collectibles, and I'm a jewelry enthusiast. I do thread up unboxings, shop Goodwill unbaggings, Goodwill blue box unboxings and unbaggings, and all that good stuff, all related to jewelry. So if you are a jewelry enthusiast, give me a subscribe, give me a like, help my channel grow. I'm hoping uh, to, you know, in 2021 to grow my channel a little bit and that would help me out immensely. So I'm gonna get right into it and you guys um, can see I'm already placing out jewelry here onto the table. And I wanted to start with this one. And this one is, you can see here, just a long, chunky turquoise necklace. And so I saw this at the thrift store, it was priced at $5.99. And so it was just absolutely stunning. And it just had this gorgeous, chunky monkey, lovely blue turquoise, um, graduated turquoise here with the beautiful kind of silver cone beads at the end, very typical of Native American jewelry styles. And when I saw this, what stood out most was the color of the turquoise and the type of the turquoise. And so what I believe this to be is number eight turquoise, which is very well known for its kind of spider web matrix. So when you see this and it has extensive kind of veining throughout it, this one, since it has so much veining, it's known as kind of like a spider web style matrix. And so also number eight turquoise, and it's a weird name because when you think about different types of turquoises, they have names, um, you know, like that, that, that don't sound like number eight turquoise. Number eight turquoise, uh, it was from a mine that was depleted in 1961. The mine was located in Nevada. And so because the mine was depleted so long ago and it's no long, it can no longer be found, it's a turquoise that is very highly prized and highly sought after. So again, this just a gorgeous, and you know, it's me sometimes here, I just find really beautiful, high quality, Native American, Native American style jewelry. And so that one is definitely an excellent example of it. And, and so in terms of value, I will need to seek out I have found someone online who does appraisals specifically for Native American jewelry. And so I think I have a few pieces that I need to reach out to them on. So I think I'm just going to seek out some additional information and kind of get a little bit more of a professional opinion on how the item should be priced before I sell it. So it's going to have to be one of those things I hoard just for now at least. And then from there, what this beautiful sterling silver and turquoise necklace, I'm going to go right here to this one. And this one, I was actually heading over to the, to the checkout, to the cashier, and I saw this over by the jewelry. It was uh, the checkout cashier was right next to the jewelry counter. I saw that and I'm like, what is that? That looks really pretty. And it caught my eye when it was hanging there. And this one was uh, $5.99, half price. So it was $3 and I looked crazy. Uh, right on the back there and I could see there that the designer was Ben Amon. And I know Ben Amon is, you know, is a very high-end New York-based designer that tends to sell his jewelry in places like Neiman Marcus and Bergdorf Goodman. Bergdorf Goodman now now closed, but <laughs> stores like Bergdorf Goodman. It's definitely a luxury brand and this was um Ben Amon is an Egyptian born designer, but has his studio in New York. And so just really beautiful, high quality, nice upscale piece of jewelry with just this beautiful brush gold centerpiece, the faux amethyst there. And I just thought, again, it was really gorgeous. The, the triple strand faux pearls, really, really lovely. And the thing about Ben Amon, um, you know, he's Egyptian born, supposedly, because I, I do know a good PR story. Supposedly he's, he claims his father was a jeweler for the royalty in a Egypt. And so he, he takes a lot of his influences from very like regal looking, large statement pieces that would be typical of what you would see on royalty. Uh, he also likes a lot of like arabesque, text, uh, arabesque architecture, Greek Roman architecture, Greek Roman influences like coins. And I think you can see quite a bit of those influences here. So I, I saw this, it was a steal, it was $3. I just never know what I'm gonna find here. I never know. And again, I think this qualifies as one of those items that I just, 
okay, I'm just going to go with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> just roll with it. Roll straight to the cashier. Anyway, um, I hope you guys all had a really fabulous New Year's. Um, you know, as good as it can get, right? We're dealing with a lot right now, but, uh, you know, you got to roll with the punches and do the best that we can. So I'm hoping for a better 2021. That's all I could say, right? So I saw this guy and this guy was hanging on the shelf and this is a faux kind of coral branch with a lovely kind of shell pendant here and a gold tone chain and I saw this and this guy had the hang tag on it that looked like this. And right on the back there, it says R.J. Graziano. R.J. Graziano, Robert Graziano, um, he's there, there's a company that's been in business now for about 30 years or so. I will tell you, R.J. Graziano at one point was a very highly sought, sought after designer. I remember, I think back in the early 2000s in New York City, um, the, you wanted a pair of R.J. Graziano chandelier earrings. They were hugely, hugely popular and very expensive too. He also sold previously in very high-end department stores. I will tell you now that that's, that is no longer kind of like the case. Uh, the jewelry has decreased somewhat in terms of the quality of materials used and has, he has created a line that's now typically sold at HSN. So I will say, I do think that this is just based on kind of like the quality of it. I do think this is RJ Graziano for HSN. But having all, said all of that, I don't think it's a, a detriment, I mean, it's still, I think, just a beautiful necklace. It's very summery. It's in excellent condition. And this guy was $3.99 or um, possibly even $2 if I got it at half price. And I just think it's beautiful. It's a really nice, excellent condition. Nice looking necklace. I love the gold tone with coral. I think they look gorgeous together. And so I definitely picked that one up as well. So I'm going to put that one right back here. Kind of out of frame, but... Um, we have a lot of jewelry, so we need to make room. Um, from there, I am going to go to some of the miscellaneous stuff that I picked up. I picked up this little brooch right here. And this kind of like gave me that like bohemian art glass type of vibe when I picked it up. It's so beautiful. But then when I started to look at it a little closer, I saw that like antique gold finish on it. And I, I've been recently becoming much more familiarized with Hollycraft jewelry. And I tend to see a good bit of Hollycraft jewelry around these parts. Um, like the antique gold finish that I'm referring to is very typical of Hollycraft jewelry. So let me show you the back. It is a convertible pin or brooch. I mean pin, pendant or brooch. So you can wear it as one or the other. I think this would look stunning because it does have that kind of nouveau um, Victorian. You know, it's got that like pseudo Victorian look like this would look gorgeous on a choker and if a choker is not your vibe maybe like a gold a beautiful like antique gold chain even and it would just hang gorgeous because it's got that very beautiful feminine um lavalier look to it with the seed pearls and the faux pink opals and the reason why not, again i think this is hollycraft hollycraft did have um a demi per a per not a demi per a per set that they made with these faux pink opals so I'm thinking that this is likely Hollycraft. Um, this guy is uh, either $3.99 or $2. E either way, I just thought it was beautiful. I love the look of it. I think it looks very feminine. I dig the um, faux nouveau Victorian type of deal thing that we got going on there. So that one I just thought was super sweet. And I picked up that guy as well. I'll put him right there. Let's see. Where do we want to go next? How about some, some glamour? Some glamour. Glamour, darling. Um, you know, occasionally I do find a, a Christian Dior piece at my thrift store. This one, I always tell you this. I know it's not like a broken record. It's either um, the jewelry is either hanging from pegboard or it's behind the counter, and you have to ask to see it. This piece was behind the counter. I kind of saw this like beautiful ropey texture when I was looking at it. I like the the two like circle design of it it's big it's bold and it just to me kind of looked very high quality so yeah you can see here it's $3.99 or it might have been half price but this one is a, a vintage Christian Dior brooch and so it has the hallmark right there up at the top and so this is definitely a beautiful piece I love its simplicity but I do love like the textural element of it uh, this would look gorgeous on your coat if you have like a beautiful wool coat or this would look stunning on a blazer. I feel like brooches are having a moment. I don't know if you guys have noticed this at all, but 
I'm looking like I see a lot of newscasters wearing brooches now and like younger newscasters, you know, like newer newscasters. And it just looks so sharp. And then I also, you know, of course, the politicians are always wearing brooches and you know like you could see some typical motifs they have eagles all the time or you know things that are indicative of like nationalism or you know like I said eagles and things like that so so I do think brooches might be having a moment and so like I said I think this would just look stunning on on a coat just really or a blazer really really lovely great design truly great design there and that so I got that guy of course I did Christian Dior yes um moving through moving through I thought that this was a really cool piece um this one was marked $3.99 I'm gonna take the sticker off because I want to show you guys this piece I just thought it was so interesting it caught my eye kind of gave me like 70s vibes like partridge family you remember in the opening of the partridge family these like little partridges these colorful groovy partridges would come out <laughs> it kind of gave me that vibe but not quite um, and so I looked at this and I'm like, what is this? What are we looking at here? Um, this is actually Trafari, which kind of surprised me and uh, did a little research on it. And this is like the plique jour technique, which I don't, if you're familiar with plique jour, it is kind of when enamel is applied into cells, creating a almost kind of stained glass effect. So they pour that in there. It was likely kind of like, you know, wire frame type of deal. And they pour the enameling in there. And again, you have this kind of beautiful where the light just passes through it. Um, really interesting kind of effect to the jewelry there. So I've never seen Trafari like this, but I have, again, I did a little bit of research. I saw they had peacocks with this, with the plique jour technique, um, just various kind of like themes. And they actually sell for quite a bit of money. I think I saw the peacock going for like $145, $155. So again, I need to do a little bit more research. I don't know if I necessarily found this specific piece, but I did find the peacock and that's the price range it was going for. So um, maybe one of the more, you know, sought after kind of collections that Trafari did. It definitely is a little bit more unusual looking than what you typically see from Trafari, I think. So yeah, I picked that guy up for $3.99 or $2, whatever it was that I paid. Yeah, for sure. So I'll put that one right over there. Oh, just real quick on the jewelry. Um, I have mixing, um, a little bit of copper today. I have this really fun kind of southwestern copper cuff I actually have two of these I usually wear them together came out of a jewelry bag and then I have this mid-century modern enam enameled copper or um, sometimes this is also called fused glass and this is this is actually is a signed piece unless it's it's Dennings I forget I think it's Dennings um, K Dennings I think and then I paired it here just with another Native American piece that I did uh, get out of a jewelry bag and this has a, just a lovely really greenish colored kind of uh, turquoise bit there so yeah so yeah you know what so in that vein I, I did pick up a piece that is kind of um, Native American inspired here and but this one is is brass and it has this lovely kind of turquoise center stone right there nice bezel set center stone I thought this was interesting I love the chevroni kind of like V shape to it it has a little bit of uh, beautiful detailing there this one definitely was half price so um $12.99 it was half of that I definitely didn't pay $12.99 for that but it's um signed on the inside it says DCC and brass and so again I just thought this one was like kind of like a very unique piece uh in terms of like cuffs I bet you this looks really cute on let's see yes it kind of goes with this whole vibe I mean the brass is a little bit of a different color you know what I mean but it, this is fun and the turquoise is really nice as well and so it's you know it's nice it's adjustable and like I said I, I did do some research on this the DCC I found a couple of very similar looking cuffs where it's this this like you know v-shaped chevron type uh, design versus just a straight cuff or um, a typical cuff of what you might see so I, I like that I thought that was a great buy um, just different, different looking. And so I picked that guy up. What else? Um, let's go here because this is kind of fun too and unusual. This one was hanging on the shelf. And this one is, I'm going to have to move some of this stuff over. This one is a huge vintage chainmail piece. 
And so it is just a gold tone and it is huge. It is just gold tone, but it kind of makes a V when it's on. Hold on. Let me see if I can get this going here because it's huge. Okay, there we go. There you can kind of see the shape of it. It is huge. And it's just uh, these linked chains that has this chain mail effect. Uh, so when you put it on, it kind of like drapes, you know, straight down. And this is, it drapes lovely. And um, I may have mentioned this before, but for whatever reason, people are really into chain mail. I have sold so many chain mail pieces from unbranded chain mail pieces that look like Peter Pan collars, like that you just wear as a collar necklace and they're rounded. Um, through to J Crew Chainmail. J Crew made kind of like a very fine chainmail um, style collection of jewelry, and that sells really well too. So I like this, and I did like that it's vintage because you can see here it has the hook clasp closure, and it was four ninety nine, and it was the shelf and on the shelf, hanging on the shelf um, on the rack, and I just picked it up because it's different and it's statementy and it's it's bold, nice vintage. Uh, so yeah. For a couple of reasons there, the, the statement aspect of it, the chain mail aspect of it, and, and just, it's very, I think, very unique. So picked up that guy for $4.99. He is a big boy. I'm going to put him over here. And let's see, where should we go next? Um, I'm going to go to some sterling silver. I picked up this little set right here, and this guy was um, $7.99, and it's just kind of that, like, 40 Hunsicker look that sterling silver plaque kind of look where you can monogram it and it, I like this because it was like a three-piece set and so it has the pendant there and then the matching earrings so I think that's a lot of sterling silver and it's cute it's you know it's like again if you like that kind of like faux like that Victorian look it's got a little bit of that um you can monogram it if that's your thing and I just like it. It, I don't, it is not Forey Hunsicker. Forey Hunsicker, this kind of almost reminds you sometimes of flatware when you see silver flatware and how it's got the elaborate scroll work on it. It's got a little bit of that going on too. So I just thought for the price and that, you know, the fact that it was a complete set, I thought that was like a really good value. So I picked up that little set right there. Uh -huh gonna go here this is very basic and the price fell off of it this little guy right here yeah so this is just a um Swarovski pin and so I saw this in there the sticker actually fell off but I think this was $3.99 as well and I just saw the swan insignia on the back and I just like the look of it I don't know I think that it looks like a really like legitimate not legitimate I mean when you think of Swarovski you think of crystal like those little crystalline figurines and this has kind of the crystal flower at the top so I've actually I, I found a similar piece in Goodwill recently and it was like a double flower with the crystal crystal flowers and I, I purchased that one too Swar Swarovski at least the pins and the brooches are not moving as quickly as they previously did. And I think that, you know, I think trends come and go. I think there was a time probably like in the 90s and early 2000s where you would go to someone's house and their mom would always have the Swarovski figures. Like there'd be, or, you know, just go there and someone would have a huge Swarovski crystal animal figurine collection. And you just don't see that anymore. So I think the brand has seen like a little bit of a waning in terms of its popularity popularity but I, I still think this is it's really beautiful and the price was right and it's in excellent condition so I did pick up that little guy right there I also got another brooch right here and this one I believe this one definitely was half price so it was two dollars and I just like the look of this because it has that kind of uh Japan uh the Japan coating to it and that's basically like when the metal is coated in black kind of like a lacquer and then they heat dry it in many different layers and it gives it the really kind of like opaque almost like matte finish to it and this guy is unmarked there's no kind of like mark or branding on there but I just thought it was interesting I like how it was kind of dimensional and again I liked the Japan um the depending to it to give it that really dark look with the pretty rhinestones in the middle so just was kind of like a spur of the moment purchase looked different and unique to me and and for the price I thought it was definitely worth it so I picked up that guy as well 
And then this is just a kind of another kind of silly, like odd purchase right here. And this guy was, oh, this was $7.99. And this is another set. And this one, <laughs> as you can see, it's just sterling silver fish. And it looks like, they look like rainbow trout to me. I'm not sure. But I just thought these were kind of silly and, and just kind of also like whimsical and fun. The earrings, these like fish earrings and the matching pendant. So yeah, just again, I don't know. Like I also purchased recently like um, a pair of shrimp earrings. You know, down here they're very into their, in Louisiana, New Orleans, they're very into their seafood. So I tend to see a lot of like thematic jewelry, like seashells and oysters and shrimp and, and fish. So <laughs> I thought it was cute and so different. I, I don't know if I've ever seen sterling silver fish before. So I'll have to, again, do some research on eBay on there and just check out. I don't know what the going price on fish jewelry is, but <laughs> I thought it was cool. So why not? I'm gonna go right here. And this kind of like was giving me like very kind of like Coro vibes a little bit. And I love this because it is in excellent condition. This is just a, a vintage bracelet with a fold over clasp. It is not marked, but like I said, it is to me is very much in the style of Coro. And I just love it because it has this like mold, these molded glass uh, stations right here. And I've, you know, I've seen this type of jewelry before. I have a one that has much larger, uh, larger molded glass stations. And so what you tend to not see is because they're old, the coloration that they that they color into the little grooves in the glass is usually faded. And these guys are fully intact. You can see the color is really pretty and vibrant there. It's not also, it's not missing kind of any pearls or anything. It's got these really cute little mounds of pearls. And so I just thought this was really sweet, $4.99. Um, I liked it a whole lot. And again, it was in very, very good condition. You see the back, very shiny. Uh, doesn't have a whole lot of wear to it. Also with these, sometimes it's, in terms of condition issues, you'll see the plating uh, rub off with a lot of these bracelets or even like the slide the slide charm bracelets, the plating definitely wears off and you see that the wear looking like, you know, it's, it gets darkened and black. And, but this one is in excellent condition. So I like this one a whole lot and I picked up that guy as well. And like I said, that one is like a little unbranded beauty, but I like it a lot. I got, you know me, I like, I do like a statement. So I got this um, really pretty, this is a Trafari. It's got the, oh no, I lie. Is this a Trafari or a Monet? Let me see what I got here. This is Monet. Okay, Monet gold tone with, uh, there's a chain under here in between the beads. You can kind of see there's like a chain and it's just like a big kind of bold, statementy 80s, shiny gold satin finish gold statementy necklace. And so this guy was $3.99 and again, in excellent condition. And so with like Monet and Trafari, you know, um, the later pieces in the 70s and 80s that are like this, um, that market also, Trafari and Monet, again, dependent on what the pieces are that you're collecting, collecting the market has softened. So, and but here in the States, I tend to not see such high prices like on, on both of those brands. However, overseas those brands are much more covered coveted and desired so i tend to sell a lot of these to international buyers i've sold um, monet pieces very like you know 80s looking pieces to people in europe i've sold a ton to china i have a couple of folks i mean no doubt they're resellers and they're buying in bulk and then they're shipping it over there in like one go so they're saving money on shipping or they use drop shippers i've had a lot of situations where i'm shipping to a drop shipper Regardless, they like they love the gold brushed eight like the brush gold, the satin gold, eighties pieces from Monet and Trafari, and so I have sold quite a bit to the international sellers. And so yeah, why not? You know the price is right. It's a good looking piece. It's in excellent condition. Picked it up. So similarly, oh, this is why this one is Trafari, and so this one again kind of like that 70s uh, 60s 70s kind of look to it it's got the uh, trafari tag on there that kind of looks like a key the little dangle and this is just i like this uh, the link on this it's got a really cool looking necklace and then we have it's very long we have the two-tone metal here at the um, pendant kind of moving pendant very very cute good good condition and this guy was three also 3.99 that's like the magic number and so that one looks like that. 
I think that's we very wearable too. So if you like, you know, if you're a gold wearer or you're a silver wearer, um, whatever it is, you can kind of blend this into your wardrobe pretty seamlessly. It's a nice looking piece over a sweater. Or, you know, I mean, you can wear this with anything. Um, I also got these um, kind of like these puffy sterling silver earrings. These I call them puffy because they almost sound hollow if you've ever encountered these. A lot of people use puffy as a keyword when they're listing these online. And um, people like these because they tend to be a little bit more lightweight. And so these are $4.99 and then they're just marked 925 And I think they're from Thailand. Let me see really quick. Yep, Thailand. And they're just really nice quality made sterling silver earrings. And uh, for $4.99 or if I paid half price for them, those were definitely a great little purchase. Another, another couple of little sterling silver earrings here. I got these guys. This is sterling silver and brass, and uh, they have little garnet cabochons on them, and I think these definitely were half price, so they were $3, and you can see they're really cute. They're just like kind of like organic looking leaves almost, or droplet, like a droplet on leaves. I just think they're pretty. They're nice. They're nice, nicely made. I'm trying to see if there's any I don't see any maker mark on there I don't think I'll have to like look at them a little bit closer but just a sweet little pair of earrings with nice little purpley purpley red garnet cabochon and then I also got this sterling silver kind of Native American style with an inlaid turquoise and these are kind of like a half hoop and uh, they are marked these are I think there is a signature on them 925 there is a signature on them so very pretty kind of turquoise inlaid earrings and these were 499 so i got that and then lastly i got another vintage bracelet this one a very heavy nice like big thick links on it it's got a combination of faux and natural capuchons on here so like this one, for example, this blue one is definitely like a little man-made. But this is cute because it's got the box cl uh, fold-over clasp. It's got a safety chain. Um, again, there's no kind of maker's mark on there, but it is kind of of that like kind of similar to Coro. So that's what I would expect. But I'll do, you know, I'll take a photo of it and I'll do a reverse Google image search and see what I can come up with. So I picked up that guy too. He was $2.99. So again, nice little a vintage bracelet in excellent condition. And so, yeah, you guys, that's pretty much everything that I'm sharing with you today on this haul. Lots of fun items, turquoise, um, you know, the Trafari, um, Trafari piece right here, and the Christian Dior, the Ben Amun, really beautiful piece right there. Uh, I, thought, I thought this was like a really fun kind of shopping trip with, again, I tried to pick up a various different items whatever speaks to me which sometimes the items that look more quality what i where i see good resale value in and it was a really fun one uh this time around i also wanted a little bonus i wanted to mention really really quick this brand right here i was talking about locals and how they're always including like oysters and shells and organic and shrimp and seafood <laughs> and all of those theme, themes in their jewelry. This is a local brand that you probably, you may or may not have heard of. It's called Mignon Faget. Uh, its signature is an F and an M with an F and Mignon Faget, like I said, New Orleanian brand, been here for many, many years and uh, they make a lot of fine jewelry pieces and all of it's in this theme. You can buy some oyster shell earrings or you could buy this little kind of snail shell looking pin and uh you know it's upscale and they make lovely jewelry someone had reached out to me and asked me how you pronounce it so you know everything's very frenchy in new orleans it's mignon faget so i did i did just want to mention that too a little like pin right there i i tend to come across it sometimes in jewelry bags it's a fun brand um so yeah you guys that's everything i thank you for tuning in and, and watching my thrift haul and sharing all these goodies with you uh, let me know what you think. I appreciate you being here. And also, happy Mardi Gras. It's the start of Mardi Gras here in New Orleans. And while we may not be carnival, having a carnival, we are definitely starting to eat king cakes. So anyway, happy Mardi Gras, you guys. Happy New Year. And thanks for tuning in. Give me a like and a subscribe on the way out. Bye.